So I decided to shift tactics a little bit. Instead of trying a dipole or a monopole antenna, I'm going to try a loop antenna. The thinking here is the uh, EM waves come out of the waveguide here. Just what this cover here is for. It has to be the same material. It has to allow the waves to pass through. And they've come out through here. As they come through this loop, it causes electrons to move back and forth this way and hopefully arc across the middle. Now, we know that this works because, well, I just tried it and set some scotch tape on fire and uh, caused that up there. So, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, here it goes. Flag in the middle of there. I'm sure that's red hot right now. Excellent. So, this is a very good article that I pulled up in researching what the microwave looks like, what the, the internal waves and all that. And right here, you can kind of see what it looks like. There's a the magnetron here, but in this one, it goes up through a waveguide down from the top. Now the one we have, the waves come in from the side. You can see the cover on the Magatron and there's no waveguide across the top at all. Uh, at least not that I could tell. So, first thing you should notice here is there's not, the waves aren't traveling in one direction. They're all kind of bouncing off the sides and going into the food. And the antennas tend to like the waves going in one direction when they're going in complicated directions like this, you know, right here you can see there's waves that are coming this way and this way, and if you imagine it in three dimensions, well, they might just cancel out uh, to put an antenna there. And that's probably what I was seeing earlier, is probably canceling out. And that's also probably why it was so touchy. You know, you need to have the antenna in just the right spot so the waves don't cancel out, and then, you know, then you can get a good conduction through it. Now, sorry about that. Now, um, if the waves are coming in through this way, I figure, well, put a loop around that. And if the waves are all coming out of the magnetron here, then you should be able to encompass that in the loop. Um, and at the very least, the reflections coming out the side will tend not to cancel out because, you know, the source, they're sourcing in through here. So waves in this way versus waves bouncing around, um, the waves coming in are going to be much more powerful than the sum total of all the waves that are bouncing around. So you'll at least have some good power coupling into there. And having the water on the side uh, helps absorb waves that have already bounced around a little bit because, you know, they'll randomly bounce around and then eventually hit the water and then burn all their energy in the water and then you won't have the waves anymore, although they'll be much less powerful. So um, that also means I could probably put a dipole right there pretend the magnetron is pointing straight in, but, um, you know, the loop antenna seems to work great, so I'm going to try to use that from now on. The loop antenna we saw, well, I got the idea because you guys are probably familiar with antennas that look like this, or older TV antennas that might look like this, you know, and what I did was I created a single loop of wire and connected it in the middle. Now, not a big radio guy, so I didn't know what kind of loop to make, but I was able to find a calculator online. And this website is here. I'll try to put this in the link. And what you do is you plug in your frequency you want, and then say I want it in centimeters. It's designed for much larger antennas. So you see there's meters and feet. Um, and it comes out. Total wire length here. This is the wavelength of the antenna. So, um, there's your half wavelength there. You know, this number looks familiar. Uh, should look familiar at least. 
And then from here we also get the circular size, or sorry, diameter of the antenna. Now this is sort of implying that you should make the antenna with this much wire and then wrap it, coil it around until it's this size. I didn't do that. I made it with, I just cut uh, this number times pi, so circumference is that, so one loop, and then cut the loop, you know, while I, you know, it was, it was a single piece of wire, and then I coiled it around and made a single loop, and then there's a little bridge in the loop, and that's where the arc was taking place. And I'm sure if I did it with, you know, multiple turns of wire, I could make it much more efficient, but um, this way things work great, so I'm not pretty happy about that. Eh, you know, 3.98 inches, just for reference, that's 1.567 inches, or, I'm sorry, 3.98 centimeters is 1.567 inches. And then if you want to know the circumference of that, well, multiply diameter times pi, and you get 4.923 inches. About well, roughly 5 inches. So if you cut yourself off a 5 inch piece of wire, or a little bit less, and then coil it up until it is... 1.57 inches, about, one point, you know, inch and a half. Um, you'll see that works out pretty well. You get exactly one turn. And then in the middle there, you've got a nice little spot to stick whatever you want to test, you know, or just air and have it arc across. Something I should have noticed before 3.98 centimeters, which is the diameter of the loop antenna that I just gave you, multiplied by pi is 12.5 centimeters. That number should look familiar to you because that is the wavelength. Um, the 4.9 inches that I gave earlier, almost 5 inches, wavelength. Now, that's this makes what's called a full wave loop antenna. Um, there's other antennas. There's the half wave loop and then small loop. Um, a full wave loop seems to work pretty well. The half wave loop here um, seems like that might be an option as well, but um, I don't know, we'll experiment some more later. <laughs> so now this is how you do the loop antenna. See the circumference of the wavelength, and the diameter of it, the wavelength divided by pi. Now, when I did it earlier, with this penny, one side of it was hooked to the loop antenna. The other side, if I just had it connected through, it didn't do anything, but if you stuck a piece of scotch tape over it as an insulator, then it would start to arc through. And so you need a small break in the antenna for it to work. Um, Recap. Tried some other methods. Tried a dipole. I went as far as this, but I didn't show it on the video. Um, didn't work. I tried this method earlier, which worked, but was very touchy. And this method seems to be the most reliable method by far. So, see you guys next time.